right, today we're going to take a look at a couple of licks from the first chorus to the Scarlet Begonia solo from May 21st, 1977 in Lakeland, Florida. And the first lick we're going to look at here is a, a lick based on Harmonize 6. And the, the context of the lick is going to be uh, at this point in the, in the verse. As I was walking along Grosvenor Square Not a chill comes over this E chord. And uh, slowly, the way the lick goes is... So again, we're starting up here at the 12th fret, visualizing this E chord, and we're going to walk in sixths on the first and third string from this shape up to here and back down again. And uh, there's plenty of resources uh, on the web about harmonized six and, and how you can play that, so I won't dive into that here. Um, because that's a whole topic in itself. I just wanted to look at the application of them. And, and um, one of the reasons I wanted to focus on this lick is it's just kind of cool to see um, this stuff in the wild and, and the details of how it's put into practice. So again, slowly. A couple of things to point out about this lick and, lick and the way that Jerry is using it here. Um, first of all is the way it's being resolved. So we're walking up, back down, and then the way it's resolved from the E chord back to the B chord is with a classic little Jerry triplet lick. So <clears throat> now here, what I'm envisioning is this B chord, a C shape B chord, if you're thinking about the cage system. And so we've got a little pull off, a triplet pull off from this note down to here and then a slide down to the 11th fret on the first string. So we're going from the fifth of the B chord, the F sharp note, down to the uh, D sharp note, and then finally landing on that B note, the root. And uh, it's just a cool resolution. It resolves, it, it, the lick, this little part of the lick starts, the triplet starts, bang on the beat, uh, where the, the, the song form goes back to the B chord. So the resolution is, is really perfect. Switch to the B chord, and that's how it resolves. So, uh, in a sense, you're kind of getting a two for one here in terms of Jerry uh, vocabulary, I guess, because he, he uses these these uh, harmonized six all the time, and then of course this this little pull off lick is uh, is is probably the quintessential classic Jerry. Uh, lick. So one last time. Whenever I'm learning a lick like this, I like to really see if I can dive into it a little bit more, explore playing it in other places on the neck or in other keys, other chord progressions, um, to really have it sink in a little bit. And, and the hope is that, you know, it'll be able to pop out that much more easily in, in an improv or, or come to mind when I'm arranging a song or something. So um, for this lick, probably the first thing I do is, is look at where I can play it at some other position on the neck. And again, not going to go into detail about a harmonized six. Um, so many good YouTube uh, tutorials on that that you can find. So, But the first thing I would do is probably instead of playing it up there at the 12th fret, I'd probably look at taking it down an octave and playing it on strings two and four instead of strings one and three and play it down in this position and, and see what happens. And so 
we can just take the lick and, and move it right down to this position and, and, and it's a pretty uh, straightforward process. We can go something like... <clears throat> and that works out fine. The only thing about this is, is I find that little um, resolution lick, the little uh, triplet pull off um, down to the B chord, is the, the final fingering is a little awkward for me to get back down to that that last B note. So one thing I might do is look at just changing that up a little bit and instead of resolving it like maybe I'd resolve it like and so instead of going back down from the D sharp note here at the fourth fret on the second string down to the B note, the root of the B chord on the third string at the fourth fret I just bend up at the sixth fret on the third string a whole step to match that D sharp, which again is the third of the B chord. So, and that sounds pretty cool, actually. I think, and um, and then the 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 good thing about resolving it that way in this position is that you've got your B major pentatonic position, which I happen to use all the time. And you've got all kinds of bendy little licks and, and, and places you can take your solo if you resolve it that way. So something like that. Um, the other thing I would probably do is look at uh, plugging this into a different tune and probably in a different key. Um, one thing I've been messing with is uh, improvising over going down the road feeling bad and I figured okay where can I plug the lick in over that tune so um, <clears throat> uh, it's easy enough I think and pretty straightforward to take a, to just drop it into a similar place in a progression which is going from the four chord back to the one that's where we found it in Scarlet Begonia is going from the E to the B so the progression for going down the road feeling bad uh, it starts in E. Going down the road feeling bad. Going down the road feeling bad. So we can plug it in right there over that four chord going back to the one. So um, now the only thing that is a little different here is if you look at the original lick, you'll notice that it resolves on beat four of the measure. That's the way Scarlet Begonia's chord changes go. That it changes from the E chord to the B chord on the verses. Uh, it anticipates it and, and uh, changes on beat four of the measure. Um, not so in, in this case. And so um, probably the easiest thing to do then to make it come out clean is just to start the lick a beat later. And so it might be something like going down the road feeling bad. And then that would work out fine. So again, I've just I, I hit the A chord there for emphasis um, that I'm kind of waiting a measure, but um, basically just delay starting the lick and then everything works out fine resolving back from the four chord to the one. Uh, so again that's just a quick example of how how you can take these licks and, and mess with them a little bit you know usually you do um, or often you do have to mess with them a little bit but you know hopefully that's the process um, uh, that gets it a little more ingrained in your vocabulary and uh, is something that becomes part of your playing so uh, give that a try. All right, let's break down this second lick. So this is a real fast triplet-based lick, super high energy that takes us, uh, that takes place over the extended B chord that ends the verse form um, and ends on the uh, the downbeat of the of the next chorus on the E chord that that launches you know the next chorus of the solo. And so this was the, the lick that really made me want to transcribe the solo in the first place just to see what was happening with this fast, high energy lick. And um, so the lick is happening over the B chord. Uh, we're just playing out of this B shape at the seventh fret, this B bar chord. That's what I'm envisioning. And the lick starts out in kind of a dissonant way. And if we look at um, 
the first note of each triplet in the sequence, the, the lick goes. So I think it's kind of useful to break it down that way just to see the bigger picture. It's starting on the, the E note, the four of the B chord, and walking chromatically up to the fifth. And then we've got a triplet that starts on the flat seventh. So the whole first half of the solo is slowly. So that first half of the solo to my ears is pretty dissonant and it kind of adds to the energy and the edginess of it. And uh, I think that comes from starting on this, this E note, which is not part of the B chord. It's not a chord tone. And then we've got the chromatic walk up to the, up to the fifth of the B and then uh, a triplet starting on the flat seventh. So all of that adds up to a pretty dissonant sound in the first half of the measure. And then the second half of the solo really just follows <clears throat> pretty much that B chord, uh, that, that um, you know, uh, smaller bar shaped B chord on the top four strings, really, really just the middle three strings here, I guess. And so that the second half starts on the B the root, up to the third of the B, a triplet that starts on the E, and then finally the last triplet starting on that F sharp, the uh, five, so the five of the B chord. So slowly the second half is... or a couple of um, double stops maybe on that E chord to just really bang, um, emphasize the start of the, the second chorus of the solo. So <clears throat> pretty cool high energy lick. Um, and definitely, at least for me, takes a minute to, to work out the picking and, and um, get it nice and clean and, and work it up to speed, take your time with it. But all right, so quickly just wanted to finish off with um, taking a quick look at how we might apply this uh, this triplet lick uh, in other situations. And again, I want to just focus on the second half of that lick. I, I think I find that a lot more digestible and, and reusable. So that part of the lick. So um, let's see how we might use that in a song like I Know You Rider. So D, D, C. So a lot of places we could actually plug it in there. So um, let's say we want to put it in uh, going from the D to the C and give us a nice boost going from the end of that D chord into the C. Well, <clears throat> obviously we can just take it from the seventh fret over a B, move it up three strings or three frets to the D chord. Um, see however we want to and it, and it fits really nicely we can resolve it up down whatever um, we could play it over the C chord resolving to the G so thing we could do is look at playing it <clears throat> in a different position and uh, the second part of that I know you writer um, set of chord changes is F C F C E minor D so what if we wanted to play it over that second F chord and take us into the end of that form in a nice high energy way. Well, <clears throat> we could play it down here. If we're noodling around up here though, one thing we could do is look at playing it out of this F position, which is gonna be a C-shaped F if we're thinking caged again. So, um, so again, that lick is always, if we're playing it over an F chord, leading back ultimately to the D, you know, F, to C, E minor, D. <clears throat> if we're gonna play it over that F chord, we wanna start on the root. So in this case, 
we might play something like. And it'll work just fine there. So again, uh, thinking about this F shape. take a minute to figure out what your fingering is for that but it's it's the same principle we're starting out if we look at the the first note of each triplet we're going the, the one of that F chord the F to the A the third to the fourth which would be the B flat and then finally the C which is going to be the fifth of that F chord so resolving on the D and so it fits great there and again just kind of a nice high energy lick that um, that kind of wraps something up so you can find a ton of places to use this lick and, and plug it in so uh, have fun with it would love to hear from anybody who wants to um, talk about this stuff or, or um, uh, you know point out different ways to use this stuff or, or anything like that so all right hope you enjoy take care